<laughs> was it an invite? You? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a T-bite. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Excited to be back. It's been a few weeks. Feel like a it's couple, been a couple. It's weeks. been a couple weeks. Two weeks. Two <clears throat> weeks to be exact. Feel feels like it's been longer than that. But we're here. We're in the kitchen mm -hmm. for the conversation, and I hope you guys are ready. And of course, um, I hope you saw the title. We are going to dedicate this conversation <clears throat> to the family of Tyree Nichols, and. Um, we're just happy to to be back. How about that? Yeah. You know, we're yeah. happy to be back in um, back in the conversation. And I just um, before we get started with um, dedicating this conversation to Tyree, we just wanted to do some little housekeeping stuff. Of course, you all know about the disclaimer, but those of you that are new and viewing with us, um, this platform is not the opinion of any said entity or person. It's just the views and thoughts of myself and Keith. And um, welcome to the conversation. Welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome, welcome. I also wanted to, uh, we wanted to, it's, this is Black History Month. And so we wanted to acknowledge some of our family and friends that have businesses. How about that? Mm -hmm. They get to have this free for now until it gets better. Then you're going to have to pay. All right. So the first person I want to do is Malika Walker, who the name of her business is Therapy in Lights. She is a psychotherapist. Um, ask you to go and follow her page. It's Therapy in Lights. E N L I G H T E N S. Mm -hmm. And then um, another friend of mine is Nairi Guthrie, who is a esthetician. Um, and the name of her business is Fab Lab. Ask you to follow <laughs> Fab Lab. F A B L A B. Go on and get your facial. It's a good thing. All right. And then, of course, Keith's sister, um, Tere, who has Sweet, Thought, Sweet Thoughts by Tere Mackey. Go and follow her. Support our, support our peeps. All right. Yeah. And, um, and of course, I don't know, you probably, those of you that don't follow me, but those that do follow me, know that I have a new business called Be Bold Entertainment, which is a 360 photo booth. So if you're having a party and an event and you want to girl, you want to level up your event, DM your girl. Yes. Follow me on Be Bold, because I have a page, Be Bold Entertainment. All right? So now that we got all that stuff out the way. And for all those whose businesses have been announced here tonight, and in the future, uh, I want a, a, a tithe to the Conversation 22. There it is. He, he, he done done it, y'all. He's, <laughs> he's already started the audacity want, for him to even talk about a tithe. Okay? I want 10%. You want 10%? I want a 10. You want them to sow into. You don't want off them to tie. You want the them to sow into. Yeah, well, you want them to sow into this good mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. Listen, Ken is laughing at you already for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite sure y'all know I don't want the ties. He's joking. Yeah. <laughs> but All yeah. right. So you want to start? <clears throat> Keith, where do you want well, to start at? Well, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, like like uh, Deborah said, <clears throat> the you know, we want to dedicate this uh, segment tonight to the family of Tyree uh, Nichols. Um, I'm quite sure everyone has heard of the tragedy that has happened out in Memphis, uh, and uh, we are. Uh, I, I, I promise you. Uh, what. Uh, Somebody, know, I don't know what happened. I done invited all you these folks. You done invited these people, and, and they're trying to get in. Yeah, y'all yeah, can't listen. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing this live with my uh, my iPhone uh, Pro Max 13, whatever you call it, and it's not big enough to, to make all these screens. Okay, it's not. So, it's not even that you. Uh, so you know. So you don't have to ask for I, just. Yeah, yeah. Just listen. Disregard. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I want you all to be here, but don't. Don't click in, if you will. Okay? All right, there you go. Yeah, don't click in. 
uh, again, you know, uh, we want to dedicate this to the family of Tyree Nichols. Uh, of course, uh, as most of you all know, uh, Tyree Nichols is a young man uh, from uh, Memphis. Um, oh, my, my God. God, my God. I need a tech person. Okay. It's all right. It's, it's okay. It's all right. That, but you, you can always see you. That's no, no. That's that's fine. Okay. Uh, uh, All kind of technical difficulties. Yeah, Shatika, leave, leave the chat, sweetheart. I don't want to hear your voice. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's back. Oh, there it is. All right. There we go. I All love right. you. I love you, cousin. <laughs> so listen, um, you know, again, uh, we, we're dedicating this to the family, Tyree Nichols. Uh, as uh, most of you all know, there's a young man from uh, Memphis, Tennessee, um, that was uh, accosted by uh, the Memphis Police Department, at least five uh, police officers. Uh, and, you know, in the process of his engagement with them, uh, as unfortunate as it was, uh, his life was taken. I, I, I you know, I want to kind of address... Um, now for, for those of you that don't know, I, I'll explain because, you know, some of you know that I work in law enforcement, but I work in a different entity of law enforcement. I actually work with, uh, juveniles. Okay. Uh, and I serve as a Lieutenant. Uh, I just finished serving. I think last week was my last week serving as the acting chief of the department. And how long did you do that? I, since July of 2022. Let's give a hand clap to so, the lieutenant. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you, you know, my entity that, that I work in is, is a lot different from uh, a, a patrolman. Uh, our, you know, sect of law enforcement uh, pretty much deals with, uh, you know, juveniles, who are incarcerated uh, and are waiting adjudication. Um, the police officers, of course, are um, responsible for patrolling the streets uh, and communities and so forth and so on. Um, in my time uh, in law enforcement, which I've been on the job now for 22 years, I think I have uh, three years to go. Hey! Three years to go, and then I'll be retired. Ooh, that is three. amazing. And how old uh, will you uh, be? Uh, young, yes, young, I'll, retiring, I'll, young. I'll, I'll be 55 years old in three years. That is something to celebrate. For. That absolutely. You know, because most people don't get to retire until they're in their late 60s. Well, let's not talk about it. it. Yeah, you know, but yeah. I, God is good. And he yes, has he been, is. Uh, he has blessed me um, throughout the years. So, um, but, I, you know, it, it's. I, I want to tell you something, you know, that that really, you know, saddens me. And I've worked with so many officers throughout the years. As unfortunate as it is, it, it, it kind of almost seems as if there is this uh, attitude of entitlement mm. that comes on a police officer. When they graduate the police academy, get the badge on their chest. Mm. Okay, uh, there, there's a lack of humility, uh, you know, uh, and and then there's this sense of empowerment to uh, to kind of be a a legal bully. Mm. And I want to let you all know that as a person who is of the law enforcement community, that we do not all. Uh, take on such um, behaviors. Uh, that is not our ideology. Uh, you know, there's always a few bad apples, you know, in the bunch. And, um, I, you know, I'm saddened that, uh, and, and, you know, the crazy thing about it is that these guys were actually young. I think some of them was like 24 20, 23, 24 years old. Okay. They were young. They were just starting their careers. And uh, you know, their careers had to be cut short uh, for uh, poor decision-making that they uh, made on, on the night uh, in question. Uh, 
Can I ask a question? Absolutely. How many, um, and you can put in the um, chat, how many of you saw that video? I don't know about you, but my heart was absolutely saddened because I have a black son. I got black brothers. I got a black brother here that's a good friend of mine. And I was just saddened to even watch that video and watch how they beat that young man brutally. And he was only like th three blocks from his home and calling for his mother while they were beating him. So that really saddened me because I got a young black man that's in and out in New York all the time. And I'm always praying for him that, you know, God would hide him under his wing. So it was, it was a sad thing. And I watched some of the, um, the, uh, funeral service mm -hmm. also. Right. Um, but yeah, really sad. Really <clears throat> right. Sad. You know, and, and tonight, you know, I really, I really want to hear from you all, um, it, it, to, you know, in regards to uh, your experience with law enforcement mm. throughout the course of your life. Uh, you know, and, uh, I, and I want to hear from you all and to see what changes do you think need to be made that will help to bridge the gap between the civilian community uh, and law enforcement. Um, I've had some experiences of my own. Hmm. Um, I was accosted by, watch this, I was an officer. I hadn't been sergeant or lieutenant yet. Mm -hmm. I was an officer, I was a brand new officer. Uh, and uh, I was sitting in my car and then impoverished neighborhood, because that's where I lived at the time, because I was a new officer. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was sitting in my car, minding my business. And then all of a sudden, well, I was... Being a, black, right? Just being a black man. And all of a sudden, I was accosted by the police department. Hey, Lisa. And about, i say about five plainclothes officers uh, came up to my car. Uh, they were screaming, they had their guns pulled out, get out of the car, get out of the car, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm saying to myself, okay, well, you know, I'm a, I'll am be all right because I'm an officer. Right. I'm, a, I'm an officer, so I'm going to be good, you know. Well, they pull me out of the car. They throw me up on the back of the driver, uh, rear driver's side and proceed to uh, search my vehicle. One detective uh, found my badge in the glove box and, and he threw it on the floor and I saw that he continued to search. Uh, and, and, and right at that moment, you know, uh, they had allowed me to make a phone call and I called one of my other friends on the police department and and then once he identified who the officers were, once he asked, it wasn't until then that they decided to let to, you, to let me go. Wow. Your so your badge didn't matter. My badge didn't matter. Wow. It, it, my my badge my badge did not matter. It did not matter. Um, you, you know, uh, African American in a that type of neighborhood. But I found out throughout that I eventually decided to to sue the police department. Mm. And throughout that whole trial and everything, I, I, I learned like so much about, you know, the law, um, the Fourth Amendment and uh, the Eighth Amendment, all those, I learned so much about all that type mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, if, if they feel threatened in any way, shape, form, or fashion, or if they feel um, a need to um, let's say uh, su suspicion in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Mm -hmm. By law, they can really, yeah. yeah, really, yeah. And and it's based on. Watch this now. It's also based on the numbers or the the, the st statistics of crime in that particular neighborhood where you're at at that particular time. Even if you're just over there visiting, if they know if the the, the crime in that area. It's high. It's high. Yeah. So they have a right to... Based based on the crime in that area alone. Whoa. Yeah. If they have a suspicion, a suspic uh, reasonable suspicion. So somebody asked the question, so what do you tell people without a badge? <laughs> so, <clears throat> you, you know, that that's a... 
It's a that that's a catch twenty two. Yeah, it's a catch twenty two because, like I said, you know, if it happened to me while I was on the job, I wasn't on duty at the time, but uh, but we have a, uh, a a saying among law enforcement um, called on the job, and so if you get pulled over by an officer, if they notice something in your car or whatever that resembles uh, law enforcement, the, the law enforcement community anyway, they'll ask the question, are you on the job? Okay. And I say, yes, I'm on the job. And then, of course, I'll show them my badge or whatever like that, and then they'll be like, all right, you know, have a good day. Yeah, but this dude threw yours on the <clears throat> floor. Yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, someone asked a question to Ray, but what about us? We feel threatened and suspicious as well, which is true, especially with that's true. everything that's going on. That's true. That's true. You know, I, I you know, believe that, that the law enforcement community uh, that patrols the streets and the community need to do or let's say if it's not the police department i would I, I would say a committed and faithful law enforcement servant uh who is dedicated to the community should do some type of uh you know seminar on how to conduct yourself when you come in contact with a law enforcement official now i'll, I'll tell you why i say that because I, and and y'all listen to me, you know, I, I've seen so many cases where we have acted ignorant for no apparent reason whatsoever. You, when you say we, you mean the officers? Yeah, no, I'm talking about the African American community. Oh, okay. For no apparent reason whatsoever, I've seen it. I'm telling y'all what I've seen. Okay. Matter of fact, I saw this one case where uh, a young man was he was on his way home. And uh, the police, you know, they pulled him over, you know, and uh, he, he kept riding, obviously, until he got in front of his house. But when he gets in front of his house, you know, his mother, she come running outside, and she's doing, like, all this extra, you know. Oh, my baby, this my baby. Hold it. Hold on. Hold on. First of all, you you in violation, number one. I understand that, you know, all the people that have lost their lives to whatever. But at the same time, too, you don't have to, to add to it and help or, or to elevate the situation. Because there are a lot of situations where I believe that we play a big part in actually elevating the situation to where it really does not have to be. But don't you think that, like, well, you did say that, but people are in fear now. I understand that. And especially... I know me as a black mom, mm -hmm. I would be concerned about my my son being <clears throat> pulled over or even one of my um, nephews being pulled over and not knowing how to be, just because they're black and not knowing how they, to respond to an right. officer when they're pulled over. Let I know me I, ask you a question mm -hmm. real quick. Your son gets pulled over right in front of the house. Mm -hmm. Police officer walks up to the window very nicely. Right. Uh, license, registration, and insurance. Right. Do you have a problem yet? No, I don't have a problem. So I wouldn't act that See, foolish. Okay, okay. Yeah, I but the you. mother in this particular situation came running out there. Went on 10. Then she, she went, no, 10 is, come on, that's, you giving her too much credit. Yep. That woman went to a thousand, <laughs> right? Okay. And then the police officer was this, that, and the third, and she berated the officer, talking about the officer's tattoos. No, what does all that have to do with the, I see what you the, mean. Yeah. the woman doing her job? All she asked him for it was his license, registration, and insurance. Right. Then you got to come out here and do the most. For what? Yeah. Causing problems. Causing a problem. So sometimes, like, we add to it, like, for no reason at all. Thomasina says, keep your hands up and no false moves. Yeah, you know, you you know, you don't have to keep your hands up. <laughs> you ain't well, they say keep them present so that they. You can. should listen. You should always make sure that your hands are visible. Right. All right. You don't have to hold your hands up. You're not under arrest or anything. You have not been given a command to do so. Uh, and it's those type of movements and so forth and so on that kind of add to 
Because you said all I would do is put my hands up. Well, he don't know. For all he know, you could have been going to reach for a gun out of the visor. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes we do extra, and it's really not. So do you think, because I, I know I've, I've heard this before, do you think that, you know how when an officer pulls you over and you say, officer, what did you pull me over for? Mm -hmm. And then they won't answer you. They'll just continue to ask you for okay. your license. I was asked this question, believe it or not, I was asked this question about a week ago. Okay. And 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 I, and I and I you know advised the person that the, you know the, the police officer may tell you why or he may not. It is based Most times on they don't. It's, it's based on the reason. It's based on his reasoning for pulling you over. Mm -hmm. If I'm if I'm doing I, well, I know even in my profession, right mm -hmm. within the realm of my profession of law enforcement, I don't always tell a subject why I'm doing something or why I'm asking certain questions because I don't want to leave them on that I'm on to something. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. So they were saying, well, this boy with his mother came out there acting crazy and she was like this and that, whatever. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, hold up. Okay. For all you know, maybe that car and the person driving it resemble somebody that they're looking for. We don't know. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. So it, well, all I'm saying is that it's not necessary to to take it to that to the extremes that we have. Right. It's it's like it, it, it's sometimes it, I've seen so much, man. Yeah. Okay. So you of course you you <clears throat> the, the, it's um all right. So Leah says we've been through too much from people that be killing us and still killing us. That's that's true. That's true. That's, that's but that's, that's, that's the. True. That's the the trauma of it all. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. The, the, the one the the one kid that was that, that his life was taken by the police. Uh, not not long ago, now. And I think that the the woman she she got in trouble. She matter of fact, I think she was sentenced. The white police officer, female. Oh, the one that when she in said that? she was reaching for her. A taser, but she yeah. actually pulled out her gun and shot right. the kid. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, here's what I'm saying about the situation. They they pulled the young man out of the car, right? Or I don't want to say they pulled him out. Let's just say from the part of the video that 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 we were shown in training mm -hmm. is that he was out of the car. They got one hand in the cuff. At that point, he hurried up, snatched away, jumped into the car. When he jumped in the car, he reached. That they they tell you straight up, the, like you don't, you don't do that. Right, right, right. And I think a lot of people don't realize and understand the dangers that law enforcement face on a day to day basis. Yeah. It's like like you know we get this bad rap like. No, like we're really out here every day putting our lives on the line. Oh, absolutely. I don't absolutely. even think the people realize the dangers that I face going into a, a, a or, or a correction officer going into a, a secure facility. Right. We can't go in there with guns. When right. we're inside of there, we ain't in there with guns. Right. And they outnumber us. Yeah. At any given time, if they want to take over, right. so our job actually is more dangerous than that of. A police officers mm -hmm. in certain certain cases. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So we got a couple more things. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa um, said we should be teaching our children math, science, etc., and not how to talk to public servants. It's sad, but we that's what we have to do, though. Mm -hmm. We have to. Mm -hmm. um, Therese says I personally feel that the law enforcement and what's this you saying antagonizes people, especially when they sense that we are. We are nervous, which we have every right to be nervous when we don't know what's going on. But instead, law enforcement calls that suspicious behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then um, another comment. Leah says, so we should be submissive to people that still killing us? Well, we, don't well, have, we have to respect the, the listen, bad. Listen, 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 yeah, listen, listen, listen. Trust me, I feel for everyone. I, 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 I do. Trust me. Living here on this earth, 
<laughs> you going you under somebody's rule. Absolutely. Promise you that. And Absolutely. if you don't abide by the laws of the land, the, the script, God, even God told the children of Israel that obey the laws of the land. Mm -hmm. Right? He said, render unto Caesar that which is due to Caesar, and then render unto God that which is due to God. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Sometimes people just have a, 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 they just have, a, you know, a hard time with authority. True. That's true. And I'm not saying that's everybody, but I'm just, some people out there, there's a lot of people out there really just have, a, uh, they just have an issue with authority. They don't like no authority at all. Well. At all. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. So we have, um. Lisa says, at the end of the day, if an overseer senses a threat, they are justified. You were talking about that. Mm -hmm. um, Leah says, mental health, health runs deep with these cops. Mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, whoa. Lisa says, you're right, Pastor. I was a correctional officer, and we only have our back up and the ability to have a fight and last until backup comes. Ugh. That's right. Uh, you, know, you know, a friend of mine... <clears throat> A friend of mine, he's a captain in Delaware, mm -hmm. in a correctional facility. And a, a couple, of, you know, a couple of years ago, whatever, uh, they overthrew his prison where he was at. Mm -hmm. You know, they were trying to rape one of the, the female officers. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. They killed another officer. Wow! Yeah. That thing was big. It was all over the, you know, national uh, media. Uh, you know, when yeah, I go to work every day, man. Listen, mm -hmm. a jail is run on respect. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. So she's right about that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So yeah. Uh, who we got here? Somebody said, ouch, keep me in prayer. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep you in prayer that you that you don't have to have no dealing with the cops. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I don't want people to, you know, I, I trust me, I understand. But all cops are not bad cops. Not all. And that's what we're trying to kill. All cops are not bad cops. That's the same thing in the church, though. Like you know, people like to classify everybody. Yeah, in the church. No, all, pa all pastors are crooked. No, not all pastors you are know? crooked. Not all of them. Yeah. You know, so I think that we have to use the same method as we use with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and you know all other things. You know, don't classify a whole group of people based off of something that a few people have done wrong. Mm -hmm. That's just simply not right. Yep. Yep. So um, Leah says yes, that's true, but this. This is not the law. This is killing. The law should be for everyone. We all know that, but well, 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 yeah. The law is <clears throat> the law is for everyone. Now I don't know wh where it is today, but you know when I was in the police academy, you know we was taught that you know the scripture says, "Them that know the way and don't walk in the way shall be beat with what many." Right, many stuff. Why do you think that is? Because you know. Because like, you know better. Exactly, because you know better. It's just like a parent. Because just, you know better. Yes. Hey, well, it's just like that with law enforcement. Wow. Yeah, if, if, if a law enforcement officer is charged with a crime, well, at least I know at that time, well, at least that's what we were taught in the police academy uh, by our drill instructor, one of our, you know. If a law enforcement officer was charged with a crime, he was charged with a crime twice. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you know better. Right. Mm -hmm. the, Lisa says the law is different for the common people. No. Mm -mm. It's I all don't how know. they don't you think it's all how they view it? Mm-hmm. Who that is? That's your sister. What she say? <laughs> she said, "From the observing the comments, this looks like a great conversation, but I can't indulge just yet." <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all, my baby sister is. Uh, <laughs> this is her first time visiting us, right? That's her first time coming. Welcome, Janika. My baby sister is an intellectual. Do you see? So, 
you know. She well, she got, can give it from her she perspective. Gotta make, yeah, she got to make sure that everything is on up and up first. She ain't going to just... Well, you know, I'm, I'm with her on that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm she, with her on that sister, one. My sister, she, she going to weigh that thing out before she, you know. But I'm telling... But, you know, my thing is, I want us to be better in our approach um, in dealing with, you know, the law enforcement community Uh we have some work to do on our end, absolutely. Yeah, but, but you, again, but you, but you do understand the fear of the people. And I the, understand and the fear of the people. I do. I understand the fear of the people. But my thing is, I just don't. I, again, I've seen two. You're talking to somebody who actually works in. And I understand that you're talking to a right? civilian. But, but no, no. And listen I'm to what from a civilian. No, listen, perspective. Okay, listen to what I'm saying. Okay, all right, I'm listening. What I'm saying is that. I've seen too many times where people take it to a level and you're that asked, it, it I really, believe that. That, that it never doesn't had to doesn't be. doesn't have to go there. Absolutely. It never had to be. It, it's like, for what? Right. What? Uh, Lisa says, the statistics show it isn't fair. The scales isn't balanced. Well, we already, we already know that, though. The scale, the scale is not balanced in terms of... In terms of... But is it because I think because they have, if I'm understanding her, but the police have training more than any public job. I guess she means, you know, how like, but well, you were saying that from what? From they the, should. Let's put that out there. Thank you. Okay. They should. But it's like any other job. People slack on their jobs, right? People slack. Yeah. Yeah. People say, I got to go teach at the academy Wednesday. I had to teach last last week. Not last week. Week before last, I had to teach at the academy. And I got to go back this Wednesday. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to teach this Wednesday. So, um, training is, is certainly um, uh, needed. And it's necessary, necessary for us to be able to be effective uh, in bridging the gap mm -hmm. between... Uh, uh, civilian uh, community and law enforcement community. Cause back so I will the, agree. Because back, back in the day, you you saw a um, when you saw an officer, you would view that person as somebody that was on your side, somebody that was there to help you, somebody not to hurt you, but to help you. And so mm -hmm. things have actually actually changed all these. All these now I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't really now. I have to disagree with you right there, and I'll tell you why. Okay. I don't think that anything has changed. Oh, okay. In terms of their behaviors. Okay, got you. I, I don't think anything's changed. As far as that's concerned, what has changed is uh -huh. technology. Okay. That, now that is now, true. Okay, yes. okay. In other words, whereas back in the day you didn't see this stuff or right. you couldn't capture... A lot of stuff. Listen, is well, like, right now. Everybody, except, and, everybody, and mama got a camcorder right yeah, on their phone. So, like that. so and a they, lot of things are being brought to the forefront. Yeah, you're right. By way of you know, you know, happen chance footage. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's just it says a lot of these officers inherit their positions. Most are not qualified or barely pass those exams. Therefore, they gun down our men and women because they are scared, racist, or villains who who have most likely been bullied at some point in their lives, and they use their position for revenge. Mm -hmm. um, Karen says, "I agree with you, Pastor. Make sure your you paper your paperwork is together and follow the rules. If you follow the protocol, then there is no problem." I, absolutely, I, you know. Okay, <laughs> that's a, good example. Um, so I, I'm sorry, Ken. I gotta do it, Ken. I gotta do it. <laughs> you remember, I said earlier in this live that I think one of the biggest problems that we have with law enforcement is that there is there is this attitude of entitlement. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, she said it's okay. <laughs> My friend Karen, right? Uh -huh. We went, I'll never forget, years ago, Karen and I you know, went out to dinner and um, I was a new officer. I was, uh, 
I think I might have been on the department maybe about a year and a half to maybe two years. And so, um, you know, can, you know, order a drink, you know. Mm -hmm. And so the, 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 you know, the young girl was, was waiter. A, a waiter waitress. And waitress. And she asked, you know, for ID. And I, and I, I looked at her like, ID, you can't look at both of us and tell that we. <laughs> She's doing her job. Mm -hmm. So I pulled my badge out. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, Why did I do why that? Why did you do that? Now it was not in a in a in an attempt to uh, yeah. a, a intimidate or anything like that. Mm -hmm. In other words, that was just my form of ID that I was using at that time. Okay, you understand to show mm -hmm. that I was not a minor. Mm -hmm. But Karen, just in case. Just in case the brother was filling himself a little something, yo, Karen killed that thing quick. What did she do? Oof, boy, she embarrassed the mess up. <laughs> if you don't put that, that bag plastic, away, plastic, child. Oh, she said plastic. If you don't put that plastic <laughs> mess back in your pocket, <laughs> why you pull that out? She was like, that little girl ain't like that. All she did was ask. I said, yeah, but can't. I was just trying to. She was like, no, man, please. She was like, put that daggone thing away. She was like, I make no kind of sense. <laughs> so, I, so I never had a chance. Lisa said you are supposed to do that. I didn't think listen, so. <laughs> listen, I never had a chance. I never had a chance. I never, I never, I never had a chance to be arrogant. <laughs> As an officer, shut, I, it, shut yo, it down. I learned quick right there. And I wasn't even trying to do but I learned real quick. I bet you did. Yeah, Karen, Karen, look, I ate hey, Karen. If it wasn't for you, I probably never would have been a sergeant or a lieutenant <laughs> or the acting chief. She does try to put that plastic put away. Put that plastic away. Oh, and my I put God. It away Thanks, too. Karen. Thanks. Yeah, just in case. <laughs> I guess Karen was like, yeah, just in case he want to act like he, you know, too big for his britches. Let me help him out. Oh, that is too mm -hmm. funny. You are too funny. Oh Y'all, that thing happened early in my career. I was like, I think I was only on the force for like a year and a half at that time. Look, Lisa said official misconduct. <laughs> official mis No, no. Okay, no, wait a minute. No. That's not official misconduct. What, it, what was it? Mm -mm. That's not official misconduct. You no, don't have to show your identification. You okay. understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so you, you, if official misconduct is when you use your authority in the wrong way. In the wrong way. Gotcha. In other words, let's say I was, you know, trying to get free drinks and okay. I said, pull my badge out. Right. That's official misconduct. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> that's too funny. I'm glad you told that. Mm -hmm. um, Leah says, my father was a correctional officer for 33 years, but he also told us the truth about what was going on. The law has never been for us as black people. Whoa. There, now, where John, where John Nika at? That, now, that's why I need John Nika because she, John Nika is good on the history and all that type of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. She signed my son. Mm -hmm. Johnny is still there. She's still there. No, no, she's no still comment. There yet. No Johnny comment. Mm -hmm. Comment, um, Nick. Who who was that that helped us out three weeks ago when we were talking about the finger? Oh, that was Crystal and the fish. Where Crystal at? Fish, you hear fish? Crystal's away this weekend. Oh, she's away. She's away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a chance to act up. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> she shut it down. No, listen, like, she taught me a lesson that night. And I, you know, now that night I was, now I didn't catch the lesson until a little bit later, but just a little later, like in terms of. In so terms you did of, something I else? Talk, no, no. I'm saying in terms of, in terms of weeks, okay. a couple of weeks or whatever. Okay. Because that night I was mad at her. So I didn't get no lesson that night. <laughs> what? Did you? Okay, I'm not gonna 
that's why. Because she shut it down, you got I mad. I was like, yo, this, I was like, really? Yo, I drove home, all the way home, like about an hour away, man. I was like, man, I was like, can I, I can't believe can I? I was like, yeah, I ain't going to talk to her no more. I don't even want to deal with her no she more. She blessed you. Mm -hmm. She blessed you real good. I was about to call Karen up, tell Karen, look, we can't be friends. <laughs> support me. Don't you disrespect me with my plastic <sighs> bags. <laughs> I told you, put that plastic away. Put that plastic away. I said, Lord, have mercy. Oh, my God. Mm. That's too and funny. you know what? If I'm now, I've been a lieutenant now for more than half of my career. Mm -hmm. I mean, Karen, I hope you did, Karen. Listen, I've been a career. I've been a lieutenant now for more than half of my career. She said we're still friends. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We cool. We cool. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've been, watch this now. Um, I've been a lieutenant, uh, I think, 14 years. Okay. 14 years. We all have a, a wallet badge for, for the car. Right? Okay. For when we drive. Mm -hmm. I had that badge for over 14 years. Okay. If I pulled it out right down, y'all would think it came in the mail yesterday. Oh, because it looked that crisp. That thing is bright. Kind of pull it out. <laughs> Shield, but okay. that doesn't really mean anything because a family member could have a shield okay. if, if, a, you yes, know, yes. if we get him one. Right. So, but the thing is, this is a he learned. Yeah, <laughs> I learned like a couple weeks later, but that night I was mad at Karen. <laughs> I didn't want to have nothing to do with Karen. You straight disrespected me. We supposed to be friends. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, so, so I said to myself, I said, yeah. I was looking for some uh, some important information in my wallet, the, uh -huh. you know, the other day. And when I opened my wallet up, you know, I uh, the velvet part that covers the badge uh -huh. flipped to the other side, and I looked at it, and I was like, "Dang, this thing looked brand new." <laughs> Fourteen hey, years. Look, it's still looking that joke looked like new. it just. Got, it just got here, yeah? Yeah, she taught you a good yeah, lesson. Karen, She's still Karen, laughing at you. Karen taught she taught, me taught you a good lesson. Hey, Karen, next time I see you, I'm going to show you my badge. <laughs> <laughs> you just going to show it, or you're not going to be trying to pull it out. No, I ain't going to pull it okay, out. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, we have any more questions or concerns or anything yeah. of that sort? That's funny. That was a good lesson. I, but, but listen, but, but I, but I, but seriously though, I, I really want everyone to know, and I know I've said a lot about, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, uh, to get the community to, to take a different approach in how we interact with Officers. Law, law, right, enforcement, law enforcement, yes. uh, so so as not to elevate or escalate the situation right. into something that it does not have to be. Mm -hmm. All right, but make no mistake about it. I am well aware of all of the uh, the, the various areas that we need to progress in mm -hmm. as law enforcement right. uh, to uh, to to better help bridge the gap between the civilian. Uh, and law enforcement communities. Right. Uh, and no way, shape, form, or fashion uh, am I being dismissive uh, of all of the, um, the, the heinous acts uh, that have been uh, brought against uh, our people, uh, our communities, uh, because I'm, I'm with you 100. I just believe that tonight my job is to help us yes. to, 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 to say what can I do you know, to make sure that, you know, I'm not doing anything. Because again, like I said, I've seen so many different situations where people have, uh, you know, uh, escalated the situation into something that it, it really it never had, had to be. To, ne never had to be. Absolutely. Um, you know, so, you know, you know, like I said, that, that, that one woman with her son, I mean, she, that was you know, the top. 
I mean, be, now, you know, she's sitting here. Uh, you know, she ain't not but racist. Look at her. Look at her tattoo. Look at that thing on me. She ain't up. She belong to the clan. That, I mean, she was oh just. Gosh. And don't realize, understand, right? That at that particular time, she was, watch this now, was in violation of the law. Because number one, you were stepping in to a situation. Your, your, Interfering. Your son is a grown man. Right. He's a grown man, right? So right. the police pulled him over. He's a grown man. They're dealing with him. He's the driver of the car. If you want to stand back or stand to the side yeah, and sorry. make sure and observe and to make sure that, you know, things are done properly and, you know, so forth and so forth, that's understandable. But that woman took the extra steps that she really did not have to do. But you, you, you and just... watch this now. She violated something that's called, watch this now, obstruction of justice. I got you. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. He's totally. trying to do his job. Leave him alone. Absolutely. She's trying to do her job. Leave her alone. It's obstruction of justice. Not to mention that you're also out here, you know, wilding just out. wilding out, disturbing the peace. You maybe just think about they it. They could have had on so many daggone violation charges. On funny. her also, right? If I, listen, y'all. Yeah. Well, yeah. Listen. Uh, I, you just maybe thought, think about something that happened a few years if ago. If that was me on the scene that day, Mm -hmm. I told the son, listen, son, uh, we all your stuff is correct. It's it's official and and you may have a nice day. And then as soon as the mom would have said, Well, thank you very much. I, 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 I. Uh oh. Turn, turn around, please. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'd have got mama. She would you would have got mama. Oh, I'd have got mama. Yeah. Because mama was doing too much. Absolutely. For no reason. Absolutely. Oh, okay, so um, Lisa says, is it mandated for social interaction training? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Christopher says, this is a hard but much needed conversation. Th now, this is my friend okay. that I was talking to you all about, uh, Captain Christopher Kern. Um, his father, uh, we, we know his family very well. They're all okay. from Lakewood, you know. Uh, Christopher is a captain again out in Delaware. Okay. Uh, oh, and, okay. And, uh, right, and uh, you know uh, the situation that happened uh, at his department that day. Uh, it, it was sad. It mm -hmm. was um, wow. You know, man, just thinking about it gives me chills. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that a lot of times. You know, years ago, I was about to be a Georgia state trooper. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so as I was sitting down talking to the one trooper, they told me, they said, well, you do know that on the midnight shift, uh, they only had one trooper. Now, this is way back in 90, I think it was in 98, 99. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, during the midnight shift, only one trooper patrols the highway from one end of Georgia all the way to the next. One. So what happens is, what they do is they, if there's an issue at any particular point, mm -hmm. they will call on that local police department to come out okay. and help them with the situation. Back up. Okay. But this police, this particular trooper began to talk to me about how he had pulled somebody over one night. He's a pretty big guy too. This dude was stood about 6'5". Okay. Maybe 260 pounds. And said that he had to literally fight for his life until somebody got there. Whoa. Because the guy was trying to overtake him and take his gun from him. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, another situation where uh, two police officers, you know, were, were killed by a guy who was a veteran. Uh, he had mental issues, okay. you know. Um, so I think that, you know, I, you know, I think we have to really look at it and say, hey, listen, you know, these guys are putting their lives on the line. Oh, absolutely. Every day, too. Every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so not knowing what it is that we face. Right. I think I think everyone needs to take that into consideration as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 When you were telling the story about the 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 mom and the... Um, the son. The son. <coughs> think about a couple years ago after one of um, our events with um, the whole our HOSA fund mm -hmm. we were um, packing up and putting uh, 
the equipment and everything away. Right. And we went to <coughs> one of my friend's um, storage unit. Mm -hmm. And it was out in a certain town. And it was just myself, my daughter, mm -hmm. and one of my male friends helping us out. Mm -hmm. And of course, somebody called the cops because mm -hmm. we were, you know, black and out. And the, the officer came and he never asked me for any ID, anything. He never asked my daughter. All he did was ask my male friend. And so because of everything that has been happening and everything that's been in the news, it made me nervous. And so when he took him around to the back of the car, I walked around also, but I just watched mm -hmm. because you just never know what can happen and what will mm -hmm. go down. Mm -hmm. And I was mm -hmm. fearful for my friend because mm -hmm. where we were it was pitch black dark. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this officer could have done anything to him or even, <clears throat> or even planted something on him just because he's just because he's a black man. And that night it really made me feel some kind of way. Like mm -hmm. I was nervous, of course, mm -hmm. because it was my daughter and myself right. and this one gentleman. Right. But like you said, but there's no reason to act out or to act ignorant unless That's something's right. you you held you know, you know, you held your composure. Yeah. Uh, Although I was yeah. nervous. Right. And shaky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So but there, there's mm -hmm. a way to handle situations and to deal with them mm -hmm. and not be so wilding mm -hmm. out and act I, I think that the I think that at the end of the day, uh, much <clears throat> can be done uh, on uh, both ends. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The community as well as law enforcement. And, uh, uh, you, you know, we, we those of us who are in the position, as I said, I'm, you know, a certified police academy instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, and so anytime that uh, I am at the academy uh, teaching, uh, I, I'm always lending some sort of uh, 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 moral mm. uh, compass, <laughs> moral compass, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and I teach all of the young recruits, you know, uh, don't, don't you know, get that badge and then, you know, just you know, lose it and act like, you know. Right. Because that happens a lot of times. And uh, what I see with these five officers, I believe that that's what happened with them. Uh, uh, it, it's an ongoing investigation. Right. I do believe that much will come to light. Mm -hmm. uh, all is not out there yet. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. Um, but it, what saddened me is that uh, someone lost their life. Mm -hmm. Not someone. Yeah, quite a few people lost their lives that day. Yeah. Quite a few people's. The families of the officers mm -hmm. were also affected. Absolutely. By this. Um, you know, if they have children or whatever, everybody. So many lives were affected uh, by this. Absolutely. So. Yep, yep. Okay, so um, I <coughs> saw that um, T Terry, Tyree, White asked for prayer. Tyree White. Tyree. That's my, that's my brother. Okay, he asked for prayer. Mm -hmm. And um, I know she's not on here tonight, <coughs> but Denise um, had asked for prayer the last time we were on. <coughs> I, did, mm -hmm. I did pray for her. I saw it after mm -hmm. we um, ended the live. But, um, but I'm like, I'm my brother, it was a, a well-needed <coughs> conversation tonight. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to say or uh, comment? Yeah. Yeah. It was a tough, tough, tough. And, you know, I, I really thank all of you, everyone that, that, that came out tonight <clears throat> to be a part of this conversation, much needed conversation. Uh, and for those of you that uh, lended your um, you know, opinions and comments mm -hmm. and so forth and so on, uh, as as. My friend Captain Kearney said, much needed conversation. And a hard conversation. <clears throat> and a hard one at that. And we should remember the Nichols family. Yes. Definitely. We should remember <clears throat> um, their family uh, when we pray. Right. Because of, you know, mm -hmm. them losing their, their child. And the mom, I listened <clears throat> to an interview. The mom said that she's not even, um, she's she's not angry. Because yeah. she realized, not only, like you just said, not only did she lose her son, 
all of those officers, their family members have lost them because of what they've done. That's right. You know, so, but I, I like, um, uh, when I listen to the services, uh, Vice President um, Kamala Harris, she quoted a scripture. It was Luke 1 and mm -hmm. 79. Mm -hmm. And she mm -hmm. quoted about us being in darkness and that we need to ask for peace, to walk in peace. And I think because people are so on edge and so whatever because of all the things that are happening, the things that we see in the news, that it's difficult to walk in peace. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to trust a man or woman that you see in a uniform that has a badge because of what's going on mm -hmm. in the world today. And like you said, it's not all bad cops. It's all bad. All cops are not bad. Mm -hmm. But when you see one, the first thing you want to think about it, oh God, what's going to happen? You know what I mean? And so we have to learn how to trust God and to try to walk in peace in this dark place. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we abide in. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, Leah says the family still has them alive. It's not the same. I think she was just trying to make a point is that she wasn't holding. We realized that they're alive. They're just behind bars. Mm -hmm. She's just trying to make a point that she's not angry because, you know, angry towards them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she's hurt. I'm sure she's definitely hurting as a mom to lose her child. You're absolutely right. It's not the same. Their family members behind bars and probably have an opportunity. Well, they have an opportunity to keep living and probably have an opportunity to get out of, out of, uh, you don't think so? Okay. All right. No, I'm just going to get out. <clears throat> okay. And I, and I don't mean, <clears throat> anyway. Okay. Okay. So... <laughs> All right. So, um, does uh, anybody else have anything they'd like to add or not? So, but so I'm going to ask the pastor to pray tonight. You know, some weeks ago she prayed for my sister. Mm. Boy, 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 that was a powerful prayer. Um, what pastor are you asking to pray? You. Oh. Pastor, pastor Deborah White. <clears throat> really? Is going to pray with us tonight. He's and for title, those so. uh, uh, that have prayer requests, um, I want you to pray for my brother Tyree. Um, he, you know, not many months ago, you know, lost his son. Okay. Um, so I, I want you to pray for him. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lisa says, thanks for saying that because they're definitely going to get just due. <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah, they're going to get double justice. Now, yeah. I, I, I didn't want to say it, but yeah, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, we, we thank you for taking out your time to come and join the conversation. And um, Keith and myself are so honored to have a few people in the pew. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> Yeah, y'all yeah. turned out tonight, and we really do appreciate it. We appreciate you. And mm -hmm. we ask you to share our live, um, if you can, with some other people so we can get some other people to know about us. Keith and I, in the background, are working on, I know we've mentioned this a couple times, we're working on doing a live um, podcast. Mm -hmm. We just got some things that we have to do. We got some equipment that we have to purchase and software and all of that, but we're working on it. Right. And uh, since we definitely will be praying for you tonight as well, uh, we also uh, uh, gave you a free advertisement. Oh, yeah. She missed the advertisement. Yeah, yeah. You missed the advertisement, but... Um, Tere, could you type in your the name of your business so that they can follow you? It's called Sweet Tooth. No, it's man. not... <laughs> <laughs> now, my sister is a, a pastry chef. Amazing. And I don't even yeah. eat junk like that. But I, 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 I recommend, I only recommend your business to people with high blood pressure. Oh, <laughs> here we go. If you got a sugar issue, you mess around being a diabetic coma. Oh, Lord, that sweetness, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going um, to close out with prayer tonight. Yes. Father, we bless you. <clears throat> 
and we thank you for this is the day that you've made and we shall rejoice yes. and be glad, and be glad in, in it. it. Yes. We thank you for everybody that's on this live tonight, God. Hallelujah. We ask you to um, intervene in each home. Tyree was one of the ones that um, asked for prayer, God. We ask you to do a work in his family, oh God. Yes. You're the healer of the brokenhearted, God. You promised us that you would heal us, God. You promised us that you would bring us deliverance, Lord Jesus. You promised that you are the lifter of our heads, God. We we trust you and we thank you yes. and we depend on you, God, that you are our <laughs> rear guard, God, that Amen. you are the almighty, oh God, that you can do everything but fail, Lord yes. Jesus. We we bless you and we thank you. We lift, we lift up Lisa Robinson and her family, God. Have thine own way in her home, God. We ask you to send your ministering angels to her home, Lord, yes. in the name of Jesus. We lift up Teray today and her family, God. Have thine own way. Do a perfect work. A perfect work in her, God, and her family, Lord yes. Jesus. We bless you and we thank you for this time that we've had together to be able to share. I thank you for my friend Keith being able to share his knowledge, his wisdom, <clears throat> his understanding to people. Lord, we bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor in yes. your son's wonderful, majestic, awesome, mighty name, Jesus, we pray.